like it. <laughs> I mean you, not, not us. <laughs> no question this morning? Uh, the question is, uh, how the negotiations come Negotiations are uh, on our draft resolution, you mean, right? Mm -hmm. uh, on our draft resolution. Um, there are many things, but uh, no, we, we are more than ever, I mean, fully mobilized. Uh, as you know, the threat posed by uh, jihadist terrorist groups in Sahel is uh, real and strong, so we are working hard on this draft resolution uh, because the fight against terrorism remains our top priority, and I believe it's a top priority for all of us here at the Security Council. Uh, so the discussions, the negotiations continue. We, in terms of timing, we hope to uh, conclude these, these negotiations as soon as possible. Consultations are continuing, but again, we stay fully mobilized on this on this priority. Uh, it's too early to say. You know, it's it's an important issue, so we need to continue the consultations until uh, we are ready to go for a vote. So. It's a bit difficult to, to answer you. Who should pay for it? You said that who should pay, pay for the force. You said that the Secretary General should make recommendations, but what would France's recommendation to the Secretary General be? Do you think that well, it's, be paid out of the it's the other way around. We, we were looking for, well, yes, for the SG to, to make some recommendations, and then we'll, uh, we'll see, so to speak. We don't, we don't want to, to influence him too much. It's really up to him to say what would be the right thing to do in terms of uh, support to the force. Ambassador, today there's a conference starting to negotiate a ban on nuclear weapons, uh, a treaty. Uh, can you give us a comment on this starting, and what do you think, what kind of impact might it have if it were to be ratified um, without the participation of stakeholders like France or other nuclear weapons states? So here it's difficult to express our position in half a, in half a minute. We have a very articulated and clear position uh, about it, so I would prefer to do it bilaterally with you instead of doing it's you know, in, a, in a few in a few seconds. I'm sorry for that. Uh, otherwise, no other no other question. On the city hall, the briefing on you know, were you the one in for, for the uh, no, 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 I was not. Did, Unfortunately, did, did, did I. Did you take from his briefing that, for example, the situation in Cameroon is now solved? He, in his written report, he said the internet's back on. And it seems to be saying it's fine. Is that your view? Again, I was I was not at the meeting, so I need to see the report, and then would be uh, better equipped, so to speak, to to answer your your question. I believe just one thing: the uh, meeting today on the on the cooperation between the UN and the African Union is very important and very timely. Uh, the, the the partnership between the two uh, organizations is a truly strategic partnership. Its importance is only growing. Um, our African friends are increasingly and efficiently contributing to the efforts towards security in Africa. The African peace operations have an important value added, or added value, I never know, to UN peacekeeping operations. Uh, so we strongly believe and support this partnership between the UN and the AU. We think it's not only necessary, but it's the future. It's the only way, uh, it's the way forward. I think there is a real trend and collective support from uh, the Security Council to back uh, African peace operations. Our proposal uh, on the G5 Sahel is completely in tune with these positive dynamics and with these strategic goals that we all share. So I think this debate is very timely and will be very useful to continue the discussion on how the UN can bring its support to the African Union when it comes to peace and security in Africa. So I encourage you to follow it uh, closely. That's my recommendation of the day. Thank you. <laughs> Merci. Bye-bye.